everyone, welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome back to the channel here today, guys, where once again there is plenty going on on the transfer front. We are going to be talking about exactly how much money Barca are going to be able to spend this summer. What is the budget? How much of that are we going to spend? And how much should we spend? That, of course, is the all important question. We are also going to be discussing the Bernardo Silva Frankie de Jong deal, which could see Frankie leave and Bernardo Silva join, but I am going to be addressing the question of whether Bernardo Silva is too old. Should we actually be considering that deal? Plus a big question too on Ousmane Dembele. Should we be raising our contract offer here in these final days to convince him to stay? We're going to be discussing it all. Plenty of questions answered today. So let's do it. Because if we do indeed begin with the very big and very important question that I think many of us have been wanting to know, exactly how much money Barcelona will have to spend this summer? What sort of figure are we talking about in the transfer market? And I do thank all of you guys for getting involved there on my community section, leaving your questions. I really do appreciate that. But it was reported on Friday there, very widely reported, that Barca will have a transfer budget this summer of 200 million euros. 200 million. I mean, that's big money. That is a lot of money there. And I should say as well, this was reported by Cope, who are often very, very reliable when it comes here to Barca News. So I would pay attention to that report. One thing that I would say, though, sort of on the side of caution, is that the transfer window these days, it's not as straightforward maybe as it once was. It's not just about here how much you can pay in transfer fees. You know, there's plenty more that you've got to consider. Agents fees, amortization not to mention wages, FFP and all of these other things, are any sales already accounted for in that 200 million figure? So I think what we have to do here is sort of take that figure as a ballpark figure, as a guide really to what we have this summer. I wouldn't say that it's an outright certainty that we've got 200 million we can go and spend now. But what that does tell us is, is that we've got money. We've certainly got a lot more than we would have expected just a few weeks ago. And that, of course, is huge for our summer plans. And I think to follow up then on that original question about how much money we have, then there's the question of now we know how much, well, how much are we going to use of that? How much of that money should we be using this summer? Are we going to spend it all? Should we spend it all? And that is the one thing that I would really keep hammering home here, especially after these levers now are going to be activated. Just because we have the money, it doesn't mean We've got to spend it all, and we've got to spend it all now. We simply cannot and should not operate in that way. But I do have to stress right now that I've got full confidence in the club and the way they've looked to go about things. Because looking at this summer right now, I think we've got a very clear plan in place. I'm very, very happy with the authority and the power that Xavi Hernandez has been given by Juan Laporta. The fact that he's very much involved in all the big decisions. Because what that means is Xavi has his list of targets. He has the players that he knows that he can bring into this team to improve it, to rebuild it, and then it's over to Mattia Almani to go and get them for the best price. And that communication and that planning is so, so key at this club right now. Because I would think back there and look at past mistakes that we've made as a club, which sort of got us into this mess in the first place, looking at the way that Bartomeu destroyed us from the inside, and you look at the decision making. You look at the fact there that we've signed somebody like Coutinho, somebody like Griezmann. I would even look there at somebody like Malcolm coming in. Was there ever even a conversation between board there and coach? Did they ever go to Valverde and say, look, we're thinking about signing this player. We're going to bring him in. Does he fit your plans? Is there a way here to fit them into the system? And I just don't ever think there was. That plan in place, that organisation within the club, it was all about, well, we've got money. We've got a lot of money. Let's go and spend it. We like this player. We like this player. Let's bring them all in. And there was never that plan. So I think what we have to do this summer is stay very calm in the market. We've got to be strategic. We've got to be organised. We need that clear communication from Chavi into the boardroom and let's secure the targets that we need that are essential to rebuild this club. And I think hopefully at the end of the summer, we'll still have money spare and that will be a good thing. 
But of course, guys, speaking now about spending that money and the kind of players that we could bring in for that money, one deal that, of course, you guys are very much looking to discuss is the whole Frankie de Jong, Bernardo Silva situation. And I think that illustrates in itself that we're not just going to spend like crazy. Because in order to sign Bernardo, we'd have to sell de Jong. It's that simple there. It would be one out, one in, and we wouldn't be overspending and cramming them all into the same squad. But I think many people want to know, and many people are sort of asking right now, do you feel as though selling a 25-year-old Frankie de Jong and replacing him with a 28-year-old Bernardo Silva is bad business. And this is a sentiment that I have heard repeated over the past few days when we've been hearing this links time and time again I am hearing this question about age. And look, what I want to say first of all here straight away is that I can completely understand not wanting to sell Frankie de Jong. Even if it means Bernardo Silva coming the other way and us signing him in response, I can understand people who say, look, I don't want that to happen. Because in my opinion here, these are two world-class players, both of them are, but they are different types of players. And you may feel as though Frankie is a player that is more suited to Barca. You may feel as though we need his characteristics more than Bernardo Silva's. Of course, you may feel the other way around as well. But what I want to make it absolutely clear here, guys, is I don't feel as though we should be making the decision here about whether selling Frankie and signing Bernardo is a good decision solely based on their age. Because Bernardo Silva right now, guys, I've seen a lot of people saying, you know, he's 28. I've even seen some people saying that he's nearly 29. But actually, the guy's 27. Let's not add years to his age. He is 27. He does turn 28 in August, so they're just under two months' time. But Frankie is 25. So yes, Bernardo is older, but there's not like a massive gap there. And I just think there's a tendency these days, not just in this case with Bernardo, but many, many players in the footballing world, that once they reach, say, 28... They're just classed as finished. They're classed as over the hill. They can't contribute at the top level anymore because they got the 28. Let's look for somebody younger. And I just don't think modern football is that way anymore. I think if anything now, when you get to about 28 years old, you're not ending your prime years. You're actually entering them. And I just think there's so many examples that you can use right here and now to illustrate that fact. You look at Man City in general. Kevin De Bruyne, for instance, the world-class player that he is. For me, one of the best midfielders in the world. But he's 31 this summer. Does that mean now he's finished? That he can't do it anymore at the top level? Would you have said that, you know, three years ago that he was done and that he had nothing left to give? You know, you look at Real Madrid, what they did in the Champions League with their midfield this season. Tony Kroos, 32. Casemiro there, over the age of 30. Look at Modric. 36 years old. So I just think right now, by all means, make your mind up on whether you want to sell De Jong, whether you don't, whether you'd want to bring Bernardo in, whether you wouldn't, that's absolutely fine, based on their profiles and fitting in at Barcelona. But I just think right now, when it comes to age and solely basing our opinions on the age of a player, just because they're about to reach 28 years old, for instance, I don't really think... That's the way to go. But speaking indeed about the right way or the wrong way to go, now I want to talk about Dembele because this is a question that honestly I was kind of expecting it. As soon as those levers then were given the approval to be activated, I knew before long we'd be hearing, okay, we've got a bit more money now, so should we be raising our offer towards Dembele? Should we accept his demands? in order to keep him at the club now, given that we have more money. But honestly, guys, once again, when it comes to having the money to renew and up that offer for Dembele, it doesn't now suddenly mean that he's worth more money. He is not worth any more now than he was a week ago. According to the club, they will have a figure in mind. They will have a weekly wage in mind, a yearly wage, that they feel that Dembele is worth. And I don't think they should go above that. And I don't think they should be forced into going above that. They have that figure in mind and they have to stand firm. And look, if we feel that Dembele is not worth what he's asking for, we're certainly not alone. Because I would ask you right now, where's the queue of clubs lining up for Dembele? It's not there. The likes there of PSG walked away from the deal. Bayern, Liverpool, they didn't entertain the idea of Dembele's demands. And all the other clubs too. There's probably one left. Chelsea are the only club really who've gone to him and are talking with him. But even they still haven't found an agreement. And I think it's interesting because now, of course, this morning, we've seen a recording of Dembele in his car. He was asked about Chelsea. He was asked about Barcelona. And he actually said, 
I'm fine in Barcelona, which actually makes me wonder now, have Chelsea backed away too? Have they not given him what he wants and now maybe he's looking to find a way back to Barca? And I just think we've reached a point again where the club cannot allow ourselves to be bullied. We have heard it time and time again from Juan Laporta, no player is bigger than this club. If you want to stay here, then that's fine. But it's always had to be on our own terms. You have to fit into our new wage structure now. Because you look at the renewals, Araujo has done it, Pedri has done it, Gaffey's going to do it. All of these players wanted to stay at Barca and they proved that by putting pen to paper on a new contract. And I just think right now that up until this point, with less than two weeks now to run on Dembele's contract before it expires, Dembele looks like a player who does not want to fit into our new structure. And so indeed, guys, those there were some of your important questions that we have addressed in today's video. And like I say, a big, big thank you to all of you that did get involved. And we'll keep doing this right throughout the summer because there is going to be lots of talking points, lots of decisions and questions that we as fans will have to answer ahead of what's going to be such an important and hopefully such an exciting summer for us all. Thank you indeed, guys, for joining me once again here today. Fantastic energy, fantastic optimism, right? right now at the club and I thank you all for your fantastic support it really means a lot and of course I will be back very very soon with more videos enjoy your weekend but until next time as always Vizca El Pasa. Uh -huh.